Hi, good evening, viewers. Welcome back to another edition of Northeast Today Live session once again. And today we have a very, very interesting guest for you. And it is none other than Natalie Delucio. Yes, you heard it right. And uh, so what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> nice How to are see you? you. Very good. How yeah, are exactly. you? It's lovely I'm to good, be here. I'm good, Natalie. <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing you uh, in your YouTube uh, channels and then like researching you and your photos. And uh, I must confess, you look way younger than <laughs> your pictures. Oh my God, really? Okay, that makes me feel yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I have this strange so, uh, ability to look very different in every picture. I don't know. Since I was a child, we've always been teased. I mean, I've always been teased by everyone that every photo I look very different. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, okay Nati. Uh, before we go ahead with the questions for today, uh, I wanted to, to show our viewers a small introduction video on you to get them oh. introduced to you. So okay. shall we go ahead? Yes, lovely. <laughs> Natalie Delucio is an Italian-Canadian classical crossover soprano from Toronto, Canada. She is often referred to as Bollywood soprano because of her unique renditions on Indian classics. Her genres include easy listening, operatic pop, vocal. Natalie was born on 29 June 1989 in Toronto, Ontario and trained to be a classical singer. She was a student at Cardinal Carter Academy for Arts. She went to McGill University to study Western classical voice and pursue a career in music. Natalie's link with Bollywood started when she received a message over MySpace to record a small part in Sonu Nigam's devotional album Mahaganesha in 2009. She later went on to record Michael Jackson's tribute song with Sonu Nigam. Natalie shot to fame when she recorded and released on YouTube her version of her popular Bollywood song Tu Jane Na. This music video reached over 1 million views overnight. Her music videos on Bollywood film songs went viral and caught the attention of Grammy and Oscar award winning composer A.R. Rahman. This was followed by joint collaborations and the song Ayla. Natalie was later invited to perform with composer Amit Trivedi as well as on Coke Studio on MTV India. She started her professional career in Bollywood with notable playback singer Sonu Nigam and has been a singer for various feature film soundtracks, namely English Winglish, Ladies vs. Ricky Bahal and Chennai Express. Natalie has also worked with legendary Italian music producer Maura Malavia C, Andrea Bocelli, Luciano Pavarotti in Bologna, Italy. The most notable recent collaboration is with the popular Naga folk musician Atsu Chesi. You raise me up that instantly struck a chord with people of Northeast India. We firmly believe that Natalie has more surprises in store for us and her journey has just begun. Northeast today wish her the very best in all her future endeavors. That was such a beautiful introduction. Thank you. You You're liked making it? Me emotional. <laughs> You're making me emotional, man. Just seeing all that after a long time. Oh, thank I'm you so, so much. I'm so glad you liked it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Natalie, you've actually been making a lot of wave in other parts of India, but I think a lot of people in Northeast uh, actually saw you and uh, acknowledged your achievements after you collaborated with uh, Atsu Chessi. Uh, so yes, yes. How did this collaboration happen? Okay, so it's quite it's quite a story. It's quite a journey. Um, you know, even before I ever went to Northeast India, 
Mm -hmm. I was drawn to it. I used to go on YouTube and watch a lot of videos, especially of the Hornbill Festival. I mean, I used to go and just watch tons of videos um, and I just found it so fascinating and I knew I really wanted to go there. Um, but I didn't know really where to start because it's very vast and, you know, it's not as easy right. as just landing in a city and taking a rickshaw and going around, you know, you have to really plan it. So um, ironically, a few months uh, after I was researching all of this, I got a call mm -hmm. to do a travel show for Discovery Channel. And we right. actually were driving from Delhi all the way to Bangkok. It was a road trip mm -hmm. travel show. And I was there as a musician to kind of meet different artists along the way. So this was a few years ago. And when I did that, uh, we drove through Northeast. And that was my amazing opportunity to drive through the Northeast and uh, have someone kind of take me through it. Uh, so we drove through Assam. Right. Uh, Nagaland mm -hmm. and Manipur. I wish we could have done even more, but um, those three were in this trip. And it was there that we stumbled upon Konoma. And right, right. I was just blown away. I felt like I had found this like hidden treasure of the universe, this like magical place in the clouds. And I felt very emotional. I was like, like the world needs to know about this. It's just so beautiful. And And the group that I met there, of the Fetsu Kiku Club, here I'll squish it here, mm -hmm. uh, the Fetsu Kiku Club, they were so warm and we actually uh, became friends because for this travel show, I worked with them for a few days. And um, mm -hmm. so we were in Kohima, Konoma, singing in the church also there. And I was equally amazed that not only, see, okay, so when I first met them, they showed me a lot of their folk music, their traditions, their way of life in Konoma. But then also right. the next day we were in the church in Kohima and they were singing Christian Western music, just the same, like in both ways, so comfortable. Yeah, and it was amazing. Excel. So it was amazing yeah. to me. And I was like, I really want to show this. It's just so interesting. I really want to showcase this. Um, and then while I was there, I happened to ask the girls of the Fetsu Siku Club, Fetsu Kiku Club, uh, have you heard of the song, You Raise Me Up? And they're like, yes, of course. So this is where the idea first, the seed was first planted in my head. Then um, I went back home after the road trip and I, I thought that this could be an interesting song to kind of go back and collaborate on. And I knew I wanted to feature some musicians as well. So again, I was on YouTube researching. Um, of course, because I was I had spent, you know, a decent amount of time in Konoma and Kohima, that was, I thought, I thought my first place to kind of start a collaboration. Um, right. So I started researching about Naga folk instruments and I wanted to feature something in You Raise Me Up. But of course, that instrumental section has a lot of notes. So uh, I had to find the right instrument that could that could showcase that. And um, someone from Konoma named Michael actually sent me Atso Chasi's video. And I was like, yes, this is amazing. He invented the <laughs> instrument and he's so yeah. like passionate about showcasing Naga folk music on a global mm -hmm. uh, platform. So then we reached out to him and he said, yes. So this is how this whole thing began. It's been quite a journey of years to put this together, honestly. Uh, so then I went back there a few years later, maybe two years later. And, um, and then we, you know, we did the recording and I was, I was nervous because this was just an experimental idea, but everyone in there, there was just a great energy that everybody was excited to do this. The reason why I chose this song is because, mm -hmm. okay. I want people to discover about Northeast. Now, if I choose a song that's not very known or, you know, that's not going to connect with a lot of people, then this video might not have get seen the way I want. Right. So I thought You Raise Me Up is so uplifting. And when I was there also, I felt a special connection with all of this whole group of people I was with. And, and they really lifted me up. And I just felt just so great with them. So I said, this is a perfect song um, because it connects with people all over the world. And it's a way for them to listen to a song they love, also find out about a new place. And then hopefully on their next trip to India, come to the Northeast and then discover this, this beautiful, beautiful, magical place. I mean, all of the Northeast, <laughs> the Seven Sisters. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, that, it's a long yeah, story, but on, yeah, I, I mean, probably answered uh, a lot of your questions pretty, in that. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but a good one. And that was, I mean, even I was wondering that uh, you raised me up. Why only that song? Because it was originally written by a Norwegian Irish duo, right? Um, Secret, Garden. Secret Garden. Which, believe yeah, it or so not, they actually shared our version. And that was really like that. I got so emotional because, see, to a lot of people, it might not mean anything. But this song is such a classic over, you know, 20 years. It's 20 years this month. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, it's been covered by hundreds of artists. So for, they shared it last week and said this is the most rare uh, and unique version they've heard of the song. So that was really, you know, it made all the kind of hard work of putting this together really worth it for them who have seen hundreds of versions to feel touched. And they talked about Konoma, Konoma in their post. They talked about Nagaland, Northeast. So I thought that was one amazing accomplishment, again, to bring Northeast to a global kind of platform, you know, and for people to know about it. Yeah, and I think your hard work really paid off because it kind of made headlines. It's like the whole like news and TV channels were filled with it. And that's how we were like, okay, we have to bring in that news. <laughs> Anyhow, and that's how I, we've been trying I, to get in touch with you. <laughs> You know, I I had no I had no idea that was gonna happen. It, I really like people might think it was strategic. It was not strategic. Like I had no. I was really. We were all really like honored and humbled that like everyone in Northeast really appreciated it. Because truthfully, I was a little nervous because you know uh, spending time there and even on YouTube, I know that there's so much more that I could show. There's so much more folk traditions, instruments, culture. You know. Um, Mm -hmm. That I could, I you know, I only have so much space in a in a song like this to do that. So I was nervous that maybe I, you know, I didn't do enough. And I was just so glad that everybody f felt like it was a great kind of start into you know bringing us all together. <laughs> yeah, it, it touched everyone, Natalie, I mean, and especially we just know you as someone you know who's in Bollywood and who's been making waves out there, and then you were taking so much of interest and collaborating and we are like, wow, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's so nice. <laughs> so, Thank um, you. Of course, most of, um, like, both of us are just going on and on about You Raise Me Up and I know I'm 100% sure that there is, you know, few viewers here who have not seen it yet. So we would like to show a short clip of it. So is that all right? Yeah, sure, of, of course. <laughs> Wow, Natalie, I mean, <laughs> I have seen this about You're bringing like, me back there. Times right now. <laughs> How and I would love for, to be there right now. <laughs> uh, you're coming back soon, right? Oh, my are God, coming, of course. You, you know, when things are, of course, when things are safe again, I 100% mm -hmm. will be there with my family. I just can't wait. <laughs> you know, I really, I really <laughs> feel like there's, I want to also go to Shillong, Meghalaya, like, I don't know, like, there's just so much. Sikkim, one of my closest friends is from Sikkim and there's just so much of the Northeast I still need to see. This was just the beginning. Um, so I, I'm really excited when things are okay to start traveling again. Oh, we would love it. And if you if you do visit, uh, uh, right now I'm based in Anarchy Pradesh. And so if oh, you do wow. visit, please do let me know. <laughs> oh my gosh, I will, I right. will. It's like high on my list. Right. Like, I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah. And Actually, like, I get a know, lot of messages from people like from people from Arunachal and they're all sending me like even other folk music and things to look at there and I'm I've been spending a lot of time on YouTube just checking everything out and it's just there's just so much to discover <laughs> so so should I uh, should, should I take that as some future collaborations coming up I hope so yeah yes I really hope so <laughs> is there any See, these, right now in the pipeline are, I have some ideas um Mm -hmm. Truthfully, these things happen. It happens over a, a span of time of exploring, and and they happen very organically. Um, mm -hmm. Because I can't these kind of collaborations. I can't really force. They come through travel, through meeting, through um, 
ideas that happen. Uh, I do, though, have an idea right now is a little something in between um, an Assamese song that I fell in love with a few oh years God. ago. Uh, I don't want to say too much yet, but maybe I'll do a little uh, video of that in the meantime, <laughs> because I've just been having okay. so much love and support from the Northeast. And I think this would be a really nice little return gift. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Natalie, I mean, how do you manage? I checked off your videos. It's in Gujarati and then... Uh, uh, what Tamil? Was it Tamil? Uh, yeah, one of Tamil. your videos? Telugu. Yeah. <laughs> Telugu? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. How do you manage? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, okay, so I studied opera growing up, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I hardly ever sang in English because opera is normally Italian, French, German. So from when I was four years old, I've been studying diction and um, I have a process with any song I would learn of how to, you know, learn the pronunciations. I used to have the dictionary with the pronunciations back before the internet and computers and Google. Um, so I think that kind of initiated this whole thing of never being afraid of singing in other languages. And mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think I'm perfect, but like, I think if anyone really puts their mind to it, of course they can. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to sound like a lope, like someone who it's their mother tongue. But I think mm -hmm. language is a beautiful way to connect. Uh, and it's been an amazing kind of opportunity and experience for me to connect with the larger audience and, and connect with more people, you know? So yeah, language has never yeah. been a barrier for me. I think music is universal. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, I've seen that. I mean, <laughs> you do it so well. And so when I was looking through it, it's like, oh my God, how does she manage? Like I'm from India and it's like, it's hard, you can even in Anastra, we life. have, no, no, I, I am so pathetic. I mean, I hate to confess, but <laughs> I'm so mad at it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I guess some people are better at some things, right? I don't know. I don't think I'm I'm great with, but I, I you just put the work in, I guess. And then um, I, th I think also after if you learn a few languages, it gets easier to kind of practice certain te techniques. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, this um uh, okay what is the one thing of uh, indie artists of northeast according to you that makes them exclusive uh, from all others wow i would think there's a few things um interestingly i think something i've i experienced in northeast is okay i mean i can't generalize of course but especially in nagaland what i felt um and mainly even in, in konoma uh that there was uh, there was a lot of pride in preserving folk music and folk traditions and even in the youth where in today's modern days with the internet and everything just changing i think a lot of traditions are lost throughout the world now um and over there i found that i thought it was so beautiful that even in today's modern world uh the youth are still so proud and and of their of their traditions and preserving it and and living it uh so that's one thing for sure Another thing is musically, I think Northeast also has a lot of unique tastes. Like, so rock music I've, I've found to be quite popular over there versus the rest of India. I think yeah. Northeast has a really strong love for rock music, which is really, I think there's just a lot of Western influence, right? Like Christian music, yes. um, English music, of course. Um, even K-pop, I believe. I've been seeing a lot of friends there that were listening to yeah. K-pop, right? So like, I just feel like there's, musically, it's extremely different. I don't feel a lot of Bollywood um, over there when I would ask about certain songs or artists. I think only some people, I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's a lot more of English influence there in terms of music, uh, Western, mm -hmm. um, which is, which is, I think, which is also why I felt an extra and like an even added connection over there. Um, you know, being from the West and when I went there, I felt musically like connected because like I said, when I asked about You Raise Me Up and everybody knew it, where maybe among some of my friends uh, in other parts of India, I wouldn't be as known um, because of, I guess, the Christian influence in the Northeast and Western music in general. So I thought that was one last thing I'll say, uh, right. like I mentioned earlier, folk music and Western music at the same time, they both live and both are, are thriving you know, which is beautiful. Not The folk music is not being, you know, left out. And I think that's that's amazing. And that's what I really kind of liked with You Raise Me Up is that we kind of brought both traditions in um, to kind of showcase that, yes, there's folk music, but they also sing in English, you know, and also 
we had some Angami language as well in there to just kind of showcase a bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right, Natalie, because uh, yeah, there's a lot of influence of uh, Western music and on K-pop and hip-hop and, and then wait, exactly. I mean, they now what they've started doing is in their mother tongue. So it's like, uh, and folk song is also coming up. Like uh, there's been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of focus on it. And so they've blended Ooh. it very well, like you have said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry, you're saying that a lot more music has come out in the local languages yeah. there? In hip hop and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they have oh. blended Western and folk music really, really well. Oh, it. right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. I would love to see more also if you can share with right. me. Like, I really, <laughs> this is exciting for me to watch. I would love to see more. Definitely. Yeah. I, yeah, I follow a lot. I may not know international singers much, but I follow our local uh, artisans and uh, artists a lot. So, yeah, I can share the links. <laughs> yes, please do. Please do. <laughs> Right. So when you were in Nagaland and uh, when you were like for there for raise me up, you raised me up. So you must have spent some time there. Was it for a few months? No, no, no. So my first trip, like I said, for the travel show, uh, we were driving through Northeast. Mm -hmm. So that was that was probably a month, a few weeks, two months. The second trip, of course, for the shoot, it was just about a week. Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. I would have loved for it to be longer. So in that time, um, we were in Kohima and Konoma. But my earlier trip, we traveled through Assam, Nagaland, and Manipur. And Majuli also, well, in Assam. Majuli was also amazing. <laughs> yes. So have you, have uh, since you were there, have you tried our local cuisines? Have you, like, have you tasted yeah. them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in... When I was in Konoma, we were staying at the local kind of, it's called the Dovi Pian, the local hotel right there. So everything was fresh every day. I don't really know. It, there wasn't like a menu where you were, you know, ordering. They were just whatever was picked from the garden from, and we were getting fresh. And it was amazing. Although spicy, I have to say. <laughs> a little spicy. I think I'm just, I'm just terrible with spice. I'm building up to it, though, better than before. Um, but I remember they also have the the... The Bugjulak, how do I pronounce it? The Bugjulak. Yes, yes, I was going to, yeah, I was oh going my to God. ask you, have you Bugjulak? Yeah. No, 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 I die. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I can't even handle a basic chili. No, no, no. But um, uh, I also, when I was in like Majuli also, I had tried the, the bamboo shoot, um, the pork right. inside the bamboo shoot, the, that as well. That was amazing. Um, so I've tried, you know, a lot of different things. I don't really know the names though, but I do remember the bamboo shoot for sure. And um, a lot of stuff was just kind of fresh, which was amazing, like grown right there, picked up and put on the plate, which is something in itself. It was just, it was delicious. I just have to grow some some tolerance <laughs> for spice. That's about it. I think everybody there was laughing at me. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I mean, uh, like out here too, some, some of the tribes, what they do is like, uh, there's a whole curry meat only out of chili. So, <gasps> and even oh little kids God. also, yeah. The chili is the curry, yeah. <laughs> and the kids and like, uh, Yes, little kids. Oh and my them, gosh. They love it. <laughs> wow. So we feed them that only. The kids also, we make them eat that. So Oh my. So that's, yeah. they build their tolerance. They, that's great. <laughs> right. I think, if I think I, maybe if I had chili earlier, then I, you know, I'd be okay. But now I think it's a little too good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then, huh. I, since you haven't picked up, I think you shouldn't. I mean, it creates a lot of uh, acidity problems and all of that. Oh. Right? So it's better you don't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, Natalie, um, tell us about your journey to India. How come, like, because one of the first questions that comes to everyone's mind is like, like, how did she come here? And then now you've settled here. It's become your home. And how yeah. was it? And especially you entered Bollywood. I mean, it's so hard for even people from like uh, other states to you know break that kind of glass ceiling but you did and how was it um you know my journey has been very strange if maybe 15 years ago someone told me I'd be living in India and singing here in Bollywood I mean it was the farthest thing from what I would ever believe um of course be why I say this is because I grew up training in opera western classical music most people go to Italy or Germany or France or 
the US to pursue that genre of music. India is probably the last place, I mean, for that. And um, what happened was I received a message on MySpace, which you mentioned in the introduction, uh, right. to come to India and collaborate on an album. And I almost mm -hmm. didn't respond to the message because the person, it was MySpace, this is way back in the day. I don't know if you even know MySpace. Um, the person's <laughs> profile was yeah. a little strange. There was just like one sentence, kind of weird spelling. And it just looked a little sketchy. So I didn't know if I was going to respond. Then I did. And I said, thank you, maybe one day. Then um, yeah. they responded and, and said, well, can you record something from Canada? So I said, okay, so I recorded from Canada and I, my Chachi, by coincidence, mm -hmm. my dad's brother's wife is Indian okay. by coincidence. Oh. And I asked her, I said, do you know who Sona Nijam is? Because I couldn't say his name. <laughs> okay. and, and she's like, yeah, he's like a legend in India. And I said, oh, I've sung on his album. And as you can imagine, she's like, how from Toronto, like you as an operatic, like how have you sung on Sonu Nigam's album in India? Like it was far removed from my life. So then I realized, oh, this, this person on MySpace is legit. Like right. it's not just a random profile. <laughs> so, right. so, <laughs> it wasn't Sonu Nigam who messaged me. It was someone from his team. Obviously if it was Sonu, I would have figured it out. Um, so then uh, I decided to take a semester off school to come to India for a few weeks, not as a mm -hmm. career move, um, this was supposed to be before I go to Italy to pursue my career <laughs> as with my okay. singing. And mm -hmm. I came here for a few weeks just to explore this invitation. And we were supposed to record like a chakra album of chance. And I said, you know, this is like a unique once in a lifetime experience. Let me come for a few weeks. We were in Mumbai and Pune. And then when I came here, I was just blown away. I mean, coming from the suburbs where where I grew up, where you don't see a person on the street for days, to landing in Mumbai, where I, we were in, I was staying in a market road where there was thousands of people every day. And I, for the first two days, I didn't leave the house because I was kind of overwhelmed of all so many people. <laughs> so this is where my journey began. While I was here, I was taken to a studio and I met with this um, music director called Amr Mohile, and he was working in a lot of background scores. So. He's, and in the background scores in films, you tend to actually hear operatic vocals, especially for scary scenes or intense scenes. So he had me recording on some films. And then I was mm -hmm. like, wow, this is so cool. Like I can, I can work here doing background scores singing opera. <laughs> and um, I just really fell in love with the kind of buzz of the city. It was very different than anything I knew. But I, it, you know, I feel like people either love or hate it. And for me, I, I loved it. I think it was just so dr drastically different than what I was used to that it was I was thriving and I was 19 years old. So everything was just exciting. Um, so I went back to Canada and I really missed in like whatever I, time I had spent in India. And while I was there, I had heard this song Tu Janena. <laughs> right, right, so, right. And I was going through like a little bit of a heartbreak at the time, like young teenage heartbreak. And mm -hmm. um I decided to put this song out. Now you have to understand at this time, YouTube was not, was very new. So doing covers of songs was not a thing. You wouldn't believe if you searched any cover song, nothing existed in Hindi before. This is the, I would say this is probably the first Hindi cover ever on YouTube. I, I, no, I couldn't find anything before that. So it was not a, it was not a strategic decision again. Um, so I put it out and I almost deleted it a few minutes later. And because I wasn't sure if people were going to tease me about my Hindi pronunciation. But then, yeah, then the overnight it became this kind of viral thing. And I had I had right. no idea that was going to happen. I mean, zero. So then life again kind of changed overnight. And I had received a lot of messages to come and perform there. And um, then kind of it brought me back. And I wanted to go back. So this was kind of a great um, introduction for me to kind of go back there and explore more and kind of do music so it's been a, it's been a journey for sure <laughs> i just want to tell our viewers that uh tu jane, jane na, overnight it had over one million views right overnight yeah and at that time you know i think nowadays we take it for granted but 
Right. At that time, like I remember getting a badge on my YouTube channel, like the most watched video in India on that day, because YouTube was new. You know, there was no covers. There was so I remember, like it was it was surreal. And I had, you know, at that time, my phone number was online, my website, my address, because who knew this was going to happen? I didn't know. So we were getting <laughs> that time. Cell phones also were still kind of new, so we were getting a lot of calls on the answering machine and uh, from people, and it was it was it was a special time. It was really. A magical time yeah <laughs> but then uh since i've been like you know checking out all your youtube videos since morning and then oh. i realized uh, to jane na <laughs> because i had to interview you this evening yeah, so yeah, i have yeah. to be ready right so uh i think it was in six years back to jane na you had no no it. 10 years back when what 10 years, 10 years? but that was probably that late, 2011 um, i guess yeah Okay, okay, and but it it was really worth the one million view overnight because I was teary eyed this morning. I I oh. I listened to Jana Gana Mana also, the one you sang. Oh, wow. I loved it, but but Tu Jane Na was so I don't know. It was it just took me to another world, and oh. I I don't know what was it about it. So I just want I made sure that my technical team. You know, has that video, and I wanted my viewers okay. to see it too. So, if I may, yeah, 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 sure. I would like you can to. Play it. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Natalie, you know Natalie, uh, but this is not the video that I I watched no, in the no. morning. No, no, the official the video. video. I, yeah, the official yeah, video. Yeah, but maybe my this technical. This is a live one. Right, right. The official one. I want my viewers to please to definitely go and check out. And I'm sure my technical team did not play this because sometimes there are copyright issues, so they must have oh, had maybe. some problem with maybe. that. Right, right. Yeah, possible, right. possible. Yeah, that was that was <laughs> live. That was in Badodra. At that performance, okay. it was really, it was really cool. <laughs> Never, nevertheless, it's uh, it was awesome. And uh, uh, I also wanted to ask you about this. Like, I was reading up on your genre, and uh, like you know, you have written like uh, operatic pop. So yeah, I'm so sorry to confess. Like you know, this is something I'm hearing it for the first time, and I don't know what it is. Can you explain? Yeah, yeah. And no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy explain? that you're asking this. <laughs> yeah, of course. You'd of course. love it. <laughs> Oh, no, no, of course. Um, okay, I'm really happy you're asking about that. So operatic pop. Actually, on my bio, I tend to write classical crossover soprano, but that also means operatic pop. Basically, like, because I mentioned that I've grown up training in opera, right? So you hear in almost everything I sing, there's an operatic influence in my voice. But I, my, I've always wanted to sing mainstream music, music that I can connect with. When I say mainstream, I mean music that can connect with everyone because I know opera can be very niche. Uh, music that can connect with everyone in in my style. So classical crossover means crossing over from classical into popular, right? So um, mm -hmm. that is me. I've, I've gone through years of trying to just be pop, just be this, but it's not who I am. I mean, I am an operatic pop singer, classical crossover singer. And even in You Raise Me Up, I mean, if you hear it, there is that operatic influence in almost everything I, I sing. So that that's what operatic pop or classical crossover soprano means. Soprano obviously is is my voice type. Um, yeah. So you you wanted me to to sing your sing? Yes. Oh, that <laughs> okay, would be I, so awesome. But I and our viewers would love that very very much. <laughs> 
Okay, so I can sing a little bit of You Raise Me Up. I don't have my piano here for the key, but I'll just think of something. <laughs> One sec. Right. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. A little bit for you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, sometimes, like since I've been like I told you since morning, I've been checking out your videos, and it reminds me. Of, I think it's Elsa from the uh, uh, animation Frozen. Frozen. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Oh, you're making my life because I, <laughs> since I was a girl, all I've wanted to do was be a Disney princess singer. <laughs> I mean, I've just grown up singing Disney music, so. That makes me really feel nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because every time, like, you know, I don't know, that she she flashes uh, into my mind every time, like, I was checking out your videos, and you have such an awesome voice, and... Thank you. What do I say? I mean, anything I say, it's going to be, like, it's going to fall short. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, it's it's really lovely speaking to you, and I really appreciate all the support. It's, it's really special, and I feel now I'm really excited to kind of build more of a connection with the Northeast and come there and maybe perform and, and, and work with more artists and just meet more people because I really feel a special connection and, and so much support and encouragement from there. And um, I'm, I'm really happy, you know, after all these years, there's like this new, this new connection that I have with, with everyone there and it, and it means a lot to me. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been so warm and sending so many encouraging messages and kind of making all the, this process worth it um that it's just really touched a lot of people and that was my goal with that and i'm just really grateful for all the encouragement and support from all of you yeah um it's like uh i is there any northeastern artist here that's on your wish list that you want to collaborate with in future well you would you probably would know this but i actually did a little crap collaboration although it's not really public per se with uh guru mm -hmm. ruben mashangba um, okay. Do you know Ruben Mashanga? No, no, no. Oh, okay. He's uh, he's he's quite a, a big artist from uh I think he's from Assam. Or, no, Manipur. Manipur. He's from Manipur. Yeah. I'm ninety nine percent sure. Um, and uh, also I although he's not here anymore, but I really love Bupen Bupen Hazarika. Yeah. I <laughs> have listened to his music, and I also feel. His voice is just like silk. Um, um, and now, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Tetsuo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. That's his sisters? Yeah. That's so I've seen their videos years ago. And um, I think when I was researching a lot also, I was watching a lot of their videos because I also found them to be so amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of incredible artists there. These are just a few of them, of course. Um, but yeah, looking forward, of course, to discovering discovering more. Right. Uh, actually, I'm, uh, I've been, I have to take questions from my viewers too, but uh, somehow, Nati, you don't realize, but my screen is frozen, so I actually cannot see oh, you. No. Am I visible? <laughs> yeah, you're totally so, visible. Yeah, 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 you're visible. Right? You're great. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so, um, should I, uh, team, I don't know try if, to see here? Yeah. I can, maybe I can check. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, uh, because, I'm seeing here. Sometimes um, they have such a little wonderful, bit. awesome questions. Yeah. I'm not really able to see many, but maybe if, if there are questions, maybe at another time I can answer them to you guys if in case um, yeah. someone from the uh, technical team can show me. Okay. Uh, is there two, three? I mean, can you see or is it not visible to you? Only a few of them are visible. Yeah. Okay. That's... But... I hope mm -hmm. that we were able to kind of answer quite a bit in, in this interview. <laughs> yeah, and maybe yeah, we'll do a, a second okay. round if, if there's some questions that um, people have after. Oh, that would be so awesome. 
<laughs> and uh, okay um i would like to go ahead with few uh, names of musicians and singers and is there like can you share some interesting facts about them and these okay. are people who have you have worked with earlier oh, ar rahman okay. oh <laughs> ar rahman <laughs> um humble i mean when you're in the studio mm-hmm. with him he's just such a humble normal person i mean even though he has this aura of course um and a genius like when I, so many ideas with him kind of happen when you're in the room and he gets these they just kind of come from the universe boop 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 do this do that um it's just and you know truthfully and you know in all of india whoever i've worked with uh, mr air ramon has always been the one who's kind of really showcased me the right way or kind of knew always how to use my voice because he loves um opera and western classical music as well and kind of knows how to use my voice in his tracks to kind of experiment um so it's always really exciting working with him yeah right and uh, sonu nigam or nijam <laughs> sonu nigam so, yeah. <laughs> sonu nigam <laughs> Oh my god. Uh if I would say the first thing that comes to me with with him is he is the powerhouse performer. Of, I have never seen someone perform like Sonu Nigam. His like I toured with him last year. We did in UK. And you have to understand how special that was because my first thing I ever did in India was with him probably 11 years ago when I was in Canada. And after that many years I toured with him uh in UK. and sang hindi and it was kind of a crazy thing from my journey to kind of you know be doing that um so sonu nigam is just really inspiring because he works so hard he even though he's done thousands and thousands of shows every show is like his first he he cares he puts so much into it and he'll give the audience hours and hours of performance and he just is really grateful for his um position that he's in and and his fame and he doesn't take it for granted and he works really hard so i think that's really inspiring yeah one thing i've seen those people who have really made it to the top they are like really humble it's the yeah. is those people who haven't made it in between so they have lots of yeah. airs and attitudes <laughs> like <laughs> tends to be with with some especially yeah it yeah it tends to be the yeah. people who are right at the top you never know <laughs> yeah <laughs> And the next like I remember be... once oh yeah sorry forget that right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah please hmm. go ahead no no never mind never I'd mind love to know. <laughs> no no oh, no no I was saying I don't know if you've heard of the yeah. director Mani Mani Ratnam he's yes, a South, he's a legend legendary right southern right director right so mm-hmm. um I was when I was working with Mr. A Ramon in Chennai and um I was sitting just outside the studio there and and next to me was money that no man i had no idea because he was so humble just like in regular clothes just sitting there like no no nothing about him would you know that this is money that no just like so down to earth and and nothing fancy and just basically like you said it's it's the biggest ones you never they're the most humble the biggest stars right. yeah <laughs> and in my shows also like we've been calling all the big big uh, you know successful great ones including you and then i've seen all of you i mean there's been none like you know who's been you all have been so accessible so comfortable to talk with and it's such an amazing experience for for me to i mean this whole experience of taking interviews it's been so awesome i mean something to <laughs> i'm uh, so glad you feel that way I'm, i'm really 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 glad no this is a this is such a lovely interview for me too i'm i'm grateful that we were able to talk and i was able to kind of talk about my experience there as well yeah okay um i think i just got a message from my team and then like uh oh <laughs> i think she is off and it's just me <laughs> Are you guys here? Okay everyone. So I think we will be ending this. I just want to say thank you to everyone who came. It's just been a lovely interview and lovely getting to know all of you. Um and I hope this interview kind of gave you a little bit of a um introspection into my journey and yes, looking forward to doing more and meeting you all again. <laughs>